When it comes to conventional housing, it's not uncommon for people to ask themselves the question, do I own my house or does my house own me? And that's exactly the realization this next couple came to before they decided to break the mold and build themselves a tiny house on wheels. Today we've traveled to Armstrong in British Columbia to check it out. Hey Sarah, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good, thank you. Lovely to meet you. G'day Oliver, great to meet you. Good to meet you as well. This is such a charming looking tiny house. Thank you. First of all, can you tell me what it was that actually inspired both of you to build this? Yes, it was a big life change for us. We got married, we bought the big house, we were working so hard to pay the big bills on the big house and we just found we lost touch with what we really enjoyed in life which was hiking, climbing and just getting outside and enjoying nature. So we were looking for a change and the tiny house was the change. Oliver had the building uh, side of things and I had design skills, so we went for it. Yeah, and the house design was sort of inspired by, we wanted to create something that looked like an actual house. So something that had the characteristics, the feel, uh, sort of the character of sort of a heritage house or an old house that would have some of those elements in it. And we sort of took those elements and brought them into the house and tried to create something that didn't look just like a square box. It was, you know, had some depth to it and showed really well. And I've so. always loved heritage homes, homes with character. So I wanted to take that and just shrink it into the tiny home. The style of the house is really lovely. You've really nailed that heritage look, especially the way that you've got these dual dormers is really interesting. Can you talk to me about how you did all this? Yeah, we obviously wanted to bring the roof line out where the loft is to sort of bring the ceiling height up in the loft. Um, this one up here, we wanted to incorporate that again, just to try to give it a little bit of character and try to give it that heritage feel, as well as it obviously takes the snow load and the rain and sheds it away from the front door. So that was one thing that gave it some architectural detail as well as a feature that could keep snow and everything off of the front door. Now you've actually designed and built this tiny house together. Can you talk to me about what that process was like? It was actually pretty easy working together. There's some moments where he kind of had to trust me with my design ideas, but then he found out in the end that it was for a good reason and it worked out. And it was really handy having him being on the other side of things for the building because I could kind of tell him what to do. <laughs> yeah, there's always those design details that I question throughout the build and I go, I have no idea how this is gonna turn out, but obviously through the process, the color schemes, everything sort of coincides together and, and that's where Sarah's strengths are really good and that's where I'm maybe lacking a little bit. You know, I can put it together, but uh, yeah. putting it together in my mind on the design side of things can be challenging. So Sierra sort of took that by the horns and did a really good job. At the same time, it was great because Oliver was able to rein me in as well because I had some crazy design ideas and Oliver was like, you know, that's not exactly going to work. So I think that's where the teamwork really came into things. And before going tiny, you were living in a larger home and the inspiration for the design of this tiny house was actually taken from your previous home, wasn't it? Yes, our house in town actually is a bigger version of this. It has the gray siding, the white trim, the cool shingle detailing. And when we moved into the tiny house, I loved our first house so much that I just wanted to take it and shrink it and to make it into a little mini version. I think that's so special how you've taken your favorite aspects from your previous large house and you've downsized it all into this one. Yeah, it's pretty unique. We wanted to bring those elements from our big house into here to make it feel like it was home. And I think that was executed really well. Before we take a look inside the house as well, can we talk about this parking spot? Because you're in a very idyllic location here, aren't you? Yes, we got so lucky with this. Uh, it's family land and we share it with family members of ours and we couldn't ask for a better spot. It's private and it's all about the nature and quiet and peaceful. Now I notice you've got some solar panels on the roof. So is this house designed to be off the grid? Because I see you're also hooked into some services here. So how does all that work? Yeah, it is designed to be fully off grid. Uh, we sort of wanted to incorporate that into the initial build. Um, we do use the services when we have access to them, but it's got three solar panels on the roof, one panel on the ground for solar tracking, and then uh, all the heating inside is all propane. So that really takes the electrical load off of the solar end of things. We also incorporated tanks into this to be able to have some fresh water if that was ever uh, something that we wanted to do. We're obviously hooked up to services here, but we wanted to sort of keep the options open and really explore the potential of, of what a tiny house could do for the off-grid. 
And what size is this tiny house? This house is 24 feet in length, uh, eight and a half feet wide by 13 foot six high. And uh, it's given that approximately 225 square feet. So pretty compact. I really love the look of this house. The way that you've broken up the lines with the interesting window shapes and these dual dormers is really nice. And I am very intrigued to see what it's like on the inside. Can we take a look? Totally. Let's take a look. Thank you. Oh, this is just so nice. Thank you. I especially like the way that walking in here, you just have this incredible view of the forest even from this lovely skylight you've got here in the center. Yeah, it was super important. The number one thing on my list was windows on windows on windows. I'm a big natural light person, and for us, we didn't really need much wall space to put things on. It was more important to be able to look out and see the nature around us, mainly because we have a pretty fantastic parking spot, but I find that even if you're inside, it feels like you're outside. Yeah, the space with this amount of natural light brings just everything in. We have 15 windows, uh, we've got three 3x3 three three skylights, so it really, really opens up the space for sure when there's that much natural light coming in. For a house this size, 15 windows is almost ridiculous, isn't it? It is, yeah. There's, there was definitely moments where during the framing stages I was like, is this too many? Can you have too many windows? But, I mean, now we look at it and we're happy that we did. Every window has its purpose. Yeah, and again, that's sort of the trade-off. With all the windows and the skylights, it will gain some heat in, in the summertime, but uh, you'll also get that gain in the wintertime as well. So that can mm -hmm. definitely help heating costs and just keeping the space warm. Having that sun actually come in if it's out does definitely benefit the house for sure. Well, so. with winters being super long and cold, there's days where you're kind of held up and it gets dark early. So I find having all the windows around you, even though you're stuck inside, seeing all the snowfall and the beautiful winter around you, it doesn't make you feel as cooped up as you normally would feel. Well, the style in here is an absolute dream. You've done such a great job with all of the decoration in here. Can you tell me what was the kind of inspiration that you were going for with all this? I've always been a fan of white on white, lots of white. It's just very calming, it's relaxing, white never goes out of style, and it makes the space feel bigger and brighter. We did add some extra warmth with the hemlock touches on the flooring and the stair treads and shelves, so I found it kind of gave it a good balance. And we brought a little pop of color with the green-gray cabinets. One of the things that I really like about the way that you've decorated the home as well is the use of plants in here because you've got this wonderful forest vista and then it almost brings it inside with all of the plants that you've got in here. So it didn't start off with a lot of plants. I was always a big fan of fake plants because I could never keep them alive. Oh no, not and the, fake plants. I know, but then it started with one plant and he survived. His name was, I think, Henry or something like that. <laughs> and then it started growing and now all of her jokes, he's like, I'm just going to come home one day and it's just going to be like a jungle and I'm going to have to move out because there's too many plants. That wouldn't be such a bad yeah. thing. She asked me one day, she's like, is there, is there such a thing as too many plants? <laughs> and I was like, I'm starting to think that there maybe is at this point. It's nice. I mean, it definitely brings the greenery in, but it's... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's getting to the point where a tiny house definitely has only, you know, a certain amount of windowsills and things that uh, that things can get cluttered on, so. This is very true. I still am personally on the side that there is no such thing as too many plants. Yeah, so, okay, he's on my team then. Okay. All well, right. I'm also <laughs> very much not a fan of fake plants, yeah. so I'm glad that you've definitely replaced those with real ones, and it is really lovely in here. Now tell me about the living room, because this is really lovely, and it seems to be quite clever what you've done with the office to the side and then the TV here as well. Yeah, so we, we know we wanted a good sized couch. We're pretty active people, but we do really enjoy our movie nights. When we first moved in, we thought we wouldn't need a TV, that we could just watch things on our laptop, but we're big movie TV buffs, so we added the TV that is under the window, and it swivels, so I can turn it while I'm doing dishes and watch the same show, or if I'm got somebody sitting on the couch and they want to watch it, which is like super handy in the small space as well. And then we have our desk unit, which is great. It's not a lot of storage, but it's just enough if I want to answer emails when I get home and do a little bit of work and store the computer underneath, and it's just what I need. I do like the way that you've built that with the little cubby for the laptop as well, because yes. being able to get that off of the table yeah. and keep it clear during the day is really nice. When we first were designing the tiny house, uh, the biggest thing, as Oliver said, you know, we don't really have any room for an official dining area. And I kind of pointed out that even when we were living in a big house, the dining table was mostly just used to put stuff on. 
So we compromise with the little desk that, yeah, some stuff gets put on, but it's only so big, so you can't really put much on it. We wanted to make the living room feel as spacious as possible. Obviously, only being in such a small space, uh, we wanted that relaxation space at the end of the day to sort of kick your feet up and uh, take it easy. One of the things we did to make the living room feel bigger because it was quite small, is we added the bay window feature, which makes it feel bigger than it actually is by reaching out with the windows. And then underneath is the outside access to our propane storage. Very clever, I like how you've done that. And now tell me about the kitchen. This definitely has a very country homestead feel to it. Totally, this is our dream kitchen in a very small size, which I think it's actually pretty big for a tiny house. Uh, we went with quartz countertops and then we went with custom cabinetry, soft clothes, so it's it's super easy to use. You just, if you're in an argument and you're mad, you still can't slam it, which is great. <laughs> we went with your classic white hex on the backsplash. Again, I just love the white on white. It may be tough to clean sometimes, but I just love the crisp, bright look of it. And then we went with a 20 inch propane range here as well. Easy to clean, I love it, so you can just remove the grills and get in there because uh, honestly, I'm a pretty messy cook, so. Yeah, I mean, the range is perfect for a compact space like this. For two people, I mean, unless we're doing some sort of crazy Christmas turkey dinner or whatever. <laughs> Which never happens. Uh, is more than enough for two people to cook with. And then obviously it's got a little tiny uh, oven with a broiler on the bottom and it's, it's a perfect size for this size of house. Uh, we wanted the kitchen to feel like it was large with lots of counter space and ample prep area, but uh, sacrificing a little bit on, on maybe the appliances. We went for a 24 inch farm sink here. We did a built in uh, range hood over top as well. And it looks like you've also been able to build a lot of storage here into your stairs as well. I can see the washer dryer mm -hmm. there. You've got the full fridge and a couple extra drawers as well. Yeah, so uh, our dog owns this space here. <laughs> she has a little kennel. She luckily gets to go to work with us every day. That's only for the odd time we have to put her in there. And then she has like a full drawer to herself. <laughs> Not gonna lie, she also has a couple drawers in the kitchen, but we won't get into that. Fair enough too. <laughs> yeah, we tuck the washer dryer combo under there as well as the fridge. Um, and then we just have an extra drawer on top there for things like laundry detergent mm -hmm. and an extra toilet paper. It's nice to be able to utilize the stairs for basically all of the appliance storage and yes. in, in terms of the big stuff and then have some extra storage for things like pets or what have you. Absolutely. And then it looks like you've got some extra storage back there tucked away. What's in there? Yeah, so there's a door on either side and we have a his and hers closet, which is a big deal for me. I wanted room for some clothing and have it separate from each other. So mine is on the right and it just gives you enough hanging room and you've got storage shelves to fold clothing and then just enough room for your little laundry basket. Yeah, it's nice to be able to have, like Sierra said, that separate area. You know, we see, see some tiny homes where that space is sort of combined and that can be uh, sort of the make it or break it factor when it comes to, <laughs> living, comes together. to living together in a tiny house. So yeah, Sierra's got her space, I have my space. Sometimes my space is neat. Sometimes her space is not so neat. Sometimes oh, please. it's the opposite. He has so. more clothing than I do, I swear. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I am not going to pick sides on this one. <laughs> right. And then behind all of that is the bathroom, I'm guessing. Yes. It's actually our favorite uh, room of the house, I think. It turned out so spacious and bigger than I thought it would. And I must say, I had to go with the claw foot. <laughs> That is adorable. It does look like a mini cast iron tub. Yeah, so my biggest thing is I always wanted a claw foot my whole life and I never got one. So even though we were moving tiny, I told Oliver we're still getting the claw foot and he's like, okay, it's gonna be small, but we'll make it happen. I can take bubble baths in here, no problem. But really, for... you actually yes. fit in that? Yes, do you want me to demonstrate? I think you have okay, to. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna show you how it works. So this is me. All right, in okay. My tiny tub. It's kind of a cross between a claw foot tub and a Japanese yes, soaking tub. Totally. Right. So Oliver just ends up taking showers in it. It's just like his shower basin. And once you wrap the curtain around, it's fully enclosed, which is nice. Have you ever tried taking a bath in that, Oliver? I have, yeah. There was about six inches of water in the bottom, and it was overflowing by the time I. <laughs> well, that's, it's into a good it, use so. of uh, water. It's conservative. You don't need much. Once you get in it, it kind of comes up nice and high. That's definitely thinking on the bright side. <laughs> yes. I like that. Then you've got the composting toilet here as well. Yes, I was super hesitant about getting a compost toilet when we were designing the tiny house. We'd stayed in a couple tiny-ish homes with ones. There were different units and they de you definitely could notice some smell after a couple days, but this one is totally worth it. No smell and we just 
I couldn't imagine using anything else. Yeah, for us, the, obviously, the amount of water usage that a regular toilet uses was a huge factor in, in deciding to obviously go the composting route. We were blown away by the amount of water consumption that an actual, you know, regular North American toilet uh, uses is pretty substantial. So when you calculate that out for a year with two people, it's a lot. it is a huge amount of water for really a time where we need to be taking a look at where our water is being used and literally flushing it down the toilet is not one of those ways. <laughs> I am totally with you on that one. Good thinking on that. And then your sleeping loft is upstairs. Yes. Can we check that out? Absolutely, let's go check it out. All right. Oh, this is just so cozy. I especially like how you've got the dual skylights up here. Yes, it was very important to open up the space. It is a little bit of a tighter loft. So that's why we went with a window on each side as well as the skylights. We love the windows on the sides because we can open the windows all the way and then at night you get just like this amazing cross breeze. Our biggest thing as we said with the skylights was it was, you know, we can watch the stars at night, but I swear every time we come up here and we're like, okay, let's look at the stars, we, ended up, we just end up falling asleep. Like we don't actually ever get a chance to enjoy them when we're too tired, but the thought was there. Another thing we did with the skylights was we did the solar shades. So these close and open, which is great because I find if you, if you have these skylights and the sun is on the home, it gets really toasty up here. So it's really important to be able to close those. Definitely nice having that option. And now what's this unit up here? Yeah, so we just went with a plug-in AC. For us, we don't use an AC enough to really justify like a built-in unit. So we just went with one that sits on the floor. We don't use that corner space anyway. It doesn't really matter to us. So it's just there when we need it. So how long have you been living in the home now? We've been in the home for about two years now. We haven't looked back since. I mean, it's been a pretty amazing experience for both of us just to be able to get back to the things that originally brought us together as, as a couple and, and open up some more free time and to be able to, to enjoy the outdoors and, and to be able to embrace you know, where we live and what it has to offer. So. I think the most common question we get asked now, two years into tiny living, is do you ever see yourself moving back into the big home? and I, I don't think so. There's uh, The only reason I'd go bigger would be maybe a little bit bigger of a tiny house in the future, but other than that, like, just so happy with it. Yeah, it's really simplified yeah. the way that we live, and really we haven't sacrificed a whole lot to move from basically, you know, 2,500 square feet down to 225. So yeah, this really gave us the opportunity for us to kind of go back to our roots and, and establish what was important to us. So. And it's been interesting though, because before when we had the big house, we worked opposite shifts. I was a dance teacher and you were working landscaping. So he was during the day, I was during the night and we never saw each other. So when we went tiny, we went from never seeing each other to living in a tiny house and going to work the same job working together because we own our business together. So it went from like zero to a hundred and we're still married, so. It's That's working. gotta be a good testimonial <laughs> yeah. for it then, right? <laughs> The tiny house in our life, what it's brought to us is just a sense of kind of like relaxation and it's taken a bit of the stress away. When I come home, I'm excited when I get into the tiny house. I come in and I like take a deep breath and it's home. And when I go traveling, I think about, man, I just want to get back to the tiny house no matter where we are. So it, it must be a pretty good home for us if it yeah, makes me that happy. It's also brought, for us, it's brought a business. I mean... Really, at the end of the day, we wouldn't have been able to to sustain the house that we were in and move into a new business venture. So uh, not only a tiny home business, but it's also, you know, brought the opportunity of of having the financial freedom to be able to feel a little bit more confident moving into uh, something like a business as young entrepreneurs. That's the big challenge is, is there's still, you know, rent payments and mortgage payments and bills yeah. that are looming that that need to get paid and it's opened up the door for us to not dismiss those things, but to alleviate as much of those things as possible so that we can focus our attention on building the business. And what was the budget for this tiny house? We had sort of put out a budget at about 70,000. That wasn't including any of our labor costs. We probably hit more like 80, 85. Uh, so we blew that budget a little bit, but we were pretty confident in that money being well spent. So. Uh, things like the solar and uh, and the finishes that we wanted on the house to really make it feel like home for us was really important. So I think those numbers really made sense for us. 
But I think yeah, at the end of the day, it's money well spent for sure. Certainly being able to do all of the work yourselves will have saved a lot of money there. Mm -hmm. And I think you can certainly see where the money has gone into this house. Yes. There are very high quality fittings and some really beautiful details that have gone into this. So I completely agree with you. Money very well spent. Thanks. Thank you. I appreciate it. Well, I think you've done such a brilliant job with this home. I love how you've taken some of those character elements of your past house and put them all into this one. And I can see that this is a home which is really working absolutely beautifully for both of you. Thank you so much for sharing it Thanks, with me. Thanks, Bryce. Appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for coming out. Thank you. This tiny house really is just so beautiful. And while it may not quite fit in this bathtub, it's just filled with so many elements that really give it that feeling of home. What I like most about this house, though, is the lifestyle that it's given to Oliver and Sarah. This house has given them their weekends back, the ability to venture into the outdoors, doing things that they love, and even start a new business. And realistically, there are very few home options that can do all of that for you.